Welcome, Astrophiles. This is Pat Cosgrove welcoming you to Cosgrove's Cosmos. Today, we're going to talk about revisiting old data. Let's get started. There's no two ways about it. This year has been a tough year for astrophotographers. First, we have bad weather. We have a year of unprecedented wildfires. If you look at what's going on in Canada, first we had fires in Alberta. Then we had fires in Quebec and Nova Scotia. Uh, now we see fires even in Hawaii and in Europe. This has put so much smoke into the air and the smoke has gone so far and wide. Lots of people have had their access to the skies cut back because of the smoke. The weather seems to be the main culprit here, with record-breaking temperatures being seen everywhere. On the other hand, I live in Rochester, New York, and we're on track to have the wettest summer ever. For me, so far this year, I've only had two nights of data collection, and even then, there was some smoke in the skies. There's no question, this has been the worst year ever. So to keep busy, I've been going back and taking some old data and reprocessing it, and I must say I've been having a lot of fun doing that. I think what's making this most fun is how different the images are coming out compared to the first time I processed them. I've always maintained something I jokingly refer to as Cosgrove's Law, and it goes something like this. Ten different astrophotographers, given the same exact data set, will produce ten excellent but very different images. Why is this? Each astrophotographer has developed their own inner eye. It's their vision for how they want their images to look, and it's the methods they use to process the images to get them there. It's what they do, it's how they do it, it's when they do it, and how much of something they do. How much of a stretch do they use when they go from linear to nonlinear? When dealing with color, how much color saturation do they put in the final image? It's how they create their masks, and when they create their masks, and how they use those masks to get the effects they want. It's how much noise reduction they do and how much noise they leave in the image or take out of the image. It's how much sharpening they do. All of these are judgment calls and they begin and they end based on the preferences of each astrophotographer. And since I've had very little new data this year, I've gone back and I've done several images now and reprocessed them. And after doing this series of reprocessing, I now have a new special corollary to Cosgrove's law. You, given the same data that you once processed in the past, will create a different and better image because now you are a different and better astrophotographer. And why should this be the case? Well, with time, you have access to new and advanced tools. You have greater experience using new tools and workflows. And your own inner eye has developed as your experience has grown. I really believe this is true. I think most of us will look back on our early work and will cringe a little bit. Often people may think that their early images look bad because their technique was not good when they captured the data, and the data is compromised. And in some cases, that's true. But I would challenge you to go back to some of the data from those images that make you cringe and try to reprocess it. You may find that your ability to pull good images out of that data has dramatically improved with your experience. Sometimes the differences are somewhat subtle. Sometimes they're jarring. Sometimes when I process an image, I have different processing goals than what I started with, and that's what causes the difference. But all of them show that my ability to pull image from the data has improved with time, and I think you'll find that's true for yourself. The first image I revisited this year was my image of Messier 27. I thought the first image was pretty good, and I wanted to see if I could get more detail on the outer gas shell. And I was surprised how much more I was able to pull out. Since I had some luck there, I decided to go back to my image of Messier 57. Now, in this particular one, I had captured some hydrogen alpha, and I was able to show some of its outer shell. And I wanted to do some reprocessing to see if I could pull out even more detail and make that shell more defined. And I was able to pull out more detail with a second reprocessing. So after that, I went back to my image of NGC 6888, the Crescent Nebula. I was pretty happy with the original image that I had. And one of the reasons I was happy with it is I was able to pull out the faint oxygen-3 shell and show it pretty well. But I wondered if I could go back and really focus on the oxygen-3 shell and see if I could get more detail from it. And I was able to do that. And if you look at the bottom of the after image here, you can see a lot more detail in the convection cells that seem to be formed at the bottom of the nebula. 
After that image, I was kind of interested to see what I could do with my image of SH2101, the Tulip Nebula. There was something about it I just didn't like, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I reprocessed it, and I thought the final result of the second attempt was much more natural. And I liked the color, and I liked the detail, and I liked the background. And here's a case where the image, I thought, changed pretty dramatically from first attempt to the second. The last image I've done recently is my image of the propeller nebula, DWB111. My first image of that, something about the quality of it made me think of a pastel drawing. It just didn't look natural. Now, I remember I had a hard time with this particular image because when you looked at the uh, narrowband images, there wasn't a lot of detail in the areas of brightness. They were kind of closed off. So I wanted to see if I could go in and pull out more detail from those areas, especially around the propeller. And that one was a difficult one to process. But in the end, I felt I came out with an image which was a little bit more natural looking and certainly brought out a lot more of the detail that are in the features that we see as the propeller. So with this experience under my belt, I'd like to reinforce a refrain that I've had on a couple of previous videos, and which is, please, always save your data. Save all of your data. You never know when you're going to have a chance to go back and discover that you can pull out a much more interesting image in that data than you did the first time around. And now, as we all go through a terrible year of astrophotography, if you find yourself skunked on getting new data, I would challenge you to dig through that treasure chest of old data that you have and see if you yourself can prove the special corollary to Cosgrove's Law for yourself. I think you will enjoy it. Thank you for spending some time with me today. This is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos, where I'm wishing you clear skies, especially this year, some clear skies, and great scene.